All right, so can I find the Odenigbo actually replace Everson Griffin's production? Um, well, to start off with, we can go over what they actually did. Griffin, he didn't get a fumble recovery or force a fumble. He did, however, get 18, not 18, eight sacks with 13 hurries, 13 quarterback knockdowns, 35 pressures and 24 quarterback hits with 26 solo tackles and 41 combined tackles. Odenigbo managed to force a fumble. He got two recoveries. He did get seven sacks of his own, four hurries compared to Everson's 13, seven, uh, seven quarterback knockdowns to Everson's 13, 18 pressures to Griffin's 35, uh, 18 solo tackles to Griffin's 26, 13 quarterback hits to Everson's 24, and 23 combined tackles to Everson's 41. Now the big difference here is uh, the number of snaps. Um, Everson Griffin, he played 848 snaps, which is 78% of the defensive snaps where Odenigbo only played 368 snaps, which is good for 34%. So if you're to average out his production on a per-snap basis for Ifadi Odenigbo, the numbers roughly come out like this. He would have forced two fumbles, four fumble recoveries. I know that's more of a luck thing, but... Um, 16 sacks, 9 hurries, 16 quarterback knockdowns, 41 pressures, 41 solo tackles, 53 combined, and 30 quarterback hits. Now, obviously, these numbers are inflated a bit just because Odenigbo was being primarily used as a pass rusher in passing situations. So, I wouldn't be like, well, he should just be an all-pro, so don't worry about it. Like, that's, obviously, that's not gonna be... Not saying it can't be a stat line. I would just be very shocked if that was the stat line. And but I think what we saw in week 17 was he was actually containing the edge well, and you still saw him get off very violently and kind of. It's very similar to how Everson does it. Maybe not necessarily as explosive as Everson, but it's still a pretty good get off and. He does that same kind of overwhelm the outside shoulder and come around the edge. He does that very well, and he's able to contain the edge in the run game. So we may already have Griffin's replacement in this, but he's also had a very similar career arc when you look at, you know, I fought E2 Everson. Um, because if you remember Everson Griffin's 2012 season, he had eight sacks on 574 snaps, which was 55% at that time of their snaps. Odenigbo bested that on a per play basis because Griffin, if you put that same eight sack number from his 2012 season when he was playing 55%, he was used in, that in the exact same way. He was used a lot in passing situations. He was used inside and kind of just wherever they could put him. Kind of like what Odenigbo was for us this past season. And he would have had five sacks based on his eight sack production per play basis if he only played 368 snaps, where Odenigbo had seven. So, remember when some of us were kind of like, oh, maybe this is good. Because, you know, it was towards the end of Jared Allen's career. And now we kind of have full circle here. Because we have a very similar player, at least arc-wise, and another great defensive end leaving. So, I'm, I'm not saying he is going to end up being Everson Griffin, but I am saying he, he is a similar player. And perhaps we can replace that production that he has gotten, well, that Griffin has you know been getting for us, through Ifadi Odenigbo. And that would be amazing, because even... If you want to compare them more, when in 2012, when he had those eight sacks, that was his age 25 season. 2019, I thought he's age 25 season. So it just kind of continues with all these similarities. And there are some that say, like I've, I've heard this a little bit. Um, I don't think it's at the forefront of anything. But I've seen some people say he's undersized and doesn't have the arm length. He is the same 
height as Everson Griffin at 6'3", and he has the same exact arm length if you go look at the measurables. So, I really don't know what that has to do with anything. I don't think he's as explosive as Everson, but I think he's explosive enough. And I, I do think Minnesota is probably more on the market of adding edge depth as opposed to replacing him as an edge player and maybe just getting good rotational pieces. Um, some things that should probably keep an eye on, though, is that Dom Capers connection to people. And so don't be shocked if we see some former Green Bay Packers on this team um, because you have guys like Nick Perry's out there right now. Clay Matthews is out there. You also have Mike Daniels along the defensive line. You also have some guys like Demarius Randall in the secondary that they could be interested in, so don't be shocked of that. But just along that edge front, I think Odenigbo has earned the chance to start. But I don't think they should be looking to flat out replace him with like a first round player. Um, even if they came back in the second or third round, I would think Odenigbo gets the chance to at least start. And then, you know, maybe it's a more versatile piece they would draft in that place. So maybe they can use either Odenigbo or whoever that would be on the inside. And while the other one's on the outside, that could be a thought. And um, we could also see some 34 fronts with Dom Capers also coming in because they did also sign Michael Pierce, who has been a very traditional nose tackle in the NFL since he, you know, well, went undrafted and went to the Baltimore Ravens. He's been in that 3 4. So you could see some more looks like that, especially if they were to add a guy like Nick Perry or Clay Matthews. So, just something to kind of venture into and maybe think about. But I would like to know your guys' comments down below. And like and subscribing. That's a helpful thing. And until next time, I bid you all adieu.